Well, thanks for doing this, by the way. Absolutely. So, yeah, so the thanks con- for inviting me. Of course. The concept here is uh, long form content uh, meant to help existing franchisees who are in the business already and doing it, Okay. but also to give a place for prospective franchisees to go and spend time in long form hearing, you know, existing owner stories, um, things that you might do differently if you could do it again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, Mm -hmm. it's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really growing tired of the 30 second to one minute video world. Right. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And so I want to I, I want to have content available to people uh, that is longer form. And OK, you know, we can all we, we all the power of a franchise is that we're all learning together yes. from each yeah. other. Right. Yeah. But if we don't deliberately go out and get the content from from you uh, and make it available to others, uh, we're missing a big part of of the value. Sure. So, so you envision this being. um like on the FRC or the on, you know, public that you can send a potential franchisees and with different topics or just that kind of thing or. I, yeah. I mean, I, they're, you know, my social media team of course is like chopping some of this stuff up and putting sure. it out. I, I yeah. you know, that's not the intent. Uh, the, in, the intent is to have a library that people can go to and just sit and listen. And, and yeah, we're going to have to organize it at some point, meaning, mm-hmm. you know, I don't exactly know how to tag interviews with whatever, yeah, yeah. but there's people that do. And so, right. um, but my first quest here is try to do 30, 40, 50 of these interviews mm-hmm. you know, okay. that, are, that are in depth and, and, uh, and then, and then we'll figure out what to do with it and how to make it, how to sure. make it uh, more valuable uh, for people. I got to ask, have you interviewed anyone from the Cincinnati market yet? Other Shanna. than probably Shanna. Shanna, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah Of yeah. course, Shanna, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and, and uh, you know, I, I realized pretty, I did, I've, I did um, Matt Lemmer and uh, Tim Hoffman, um, Shanna, uh, Tom Belange, and I, I didn't do Tom on this, but anyway, I, I was like, they're all ARs, right? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, naturally, those are the people I'm closest to, uh, yeah. right? or had the, the longest standing relationships with. So those, those are the people I, but so then I wanted to work hard to get some newer owners in. Like you, you've been open for a little over half, like probably about almost half a year, half year. Yep. Uh, we opened June 20th. So yeah. Yeah. So six months right now. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so I, um, I appreciate you doing it. And, and this perspective yeah. of being six months in is, is a really, I mean, to me, it's yeah. a really important perspective. So um I do before we really kick things off, because I really, it's important to me that um, I'm being genuine and I want to provide content for you. That's helpful. Um, There's a possibility that I'm selling my store. Oh, is that right? And Yeah. Now it might not happen, um, but I I want you to know that I want you to know the reasons why, but also that if if it doesn't happen, I'm in it, you know, and I'm here and I'm committed. Um, But my husband, I think you've met him maybe once or twice. He's in software. And, you know, Mike, I've been in the system for three years. It took me to develop that store. Um, A lot can change in software in three years. And so he's, um, the stuff he's working on, it's it's really taken off. And uh, just the the time and energy that it's taking him to um, be gone. And then the responsibilities at home. I'm just not living the same life I was three years ago, you know? And, um, I, I'm someone that's in it, you know, if I'm going to jump in, I'm going to jump in, uh, and I want to make sure, and I, I know how much it takes to open stores and to grow them and to, um, you know, it takes a lot of commitment. And so there's a store owner operator down the street and, uh, she may buy it, but if it doesn't work for her financially, you know, I'm not just trying to shop this thing around. It just was right, a conversation sure. we got into and I could say, you know, maybe that would be a good thing for you that also, frankly, someone I'd be willing to give that sweat equity to that I've really been working on for the last six months. But if it doesn't um, pan out, you know, I, I care about this and I love Big B and yeah. uh, I want to see this store do well. And so I just didn't, if Shanna ever talked to you and said, oh, she was selling, I just don't want you to feel like I was being disingenuous <laughs> sure. here. Okay. No, 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 great. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that, this conversation in the content. Okay. Because I mean, it's a big part of, of owning 
anything right is is yeah. is this the right moment uh yeah is it working is it not working and we have to always be doing that evaluation always yeah and, and sometimes i think people get themselves into a business or a store and then it it you got to be willing to you got to be willing to change and move right and yeah. so you know three years is a long time and a lot of changes in three years so yeah. uh yeah. you know my hat's off to you and, and and if that if that works out for you and your family perfect you know yeah cool all right yeah. great yeah. um <laughs> so so okay two and a half years to to get open mm -hmm. one of the longer yes projects i think we've ever been involved in yes yeah what, what the heck happened why what tell me tell me about that yeah so um when i came on board so i think the why you have to back up and know that i've been in the coffee industry since i was 16 years old my first job was at subway and i worked at three different subways when i was 15 years old my second job um was at at starbucks and i fell in love um, with the culture of coffee and what that brings. And I just stuck with it. Um, I stayed with Starbucks for a really long time. I also worked for some mom and pop shops around town. Um, I did some, you know, consulting. I helped one of the service techs in town when he would go in and help stores open, I would go and help them. I just, I love coffee. I love, um, the relationship that you get to build with the community, I think is really unique uh, because you're seeing the, the community every day. So I left coffee to be a stay-at-home mom. I have three kids. And it just so happened that uh, Shanna Novacell was my neighbor and Shanna was in politics. And she came over one night and we were having drinks and she said, I'm going to open a coffee shop. And I said, you're what? You know, I thought she was... <laughs> crazy because I had, I had done it. Um, I, I helped, you know, another chain in town open several stores and, and I just, she had, well, she wasn't pregnant at the time, but she had just gotten married. And, you know, I, I just, I was shocked. And frankly, I was concerned for her. I was concerned that she was giving up a very successful career in politics to, um, you know, kind of do this thing that she would end up regretting. And I didn't know Big B. I, I'm not from Michigan. I hadn't, I had just hadn't heard of Big B yet. Um, and so I watched her and I even knew the spot in Fort Mitchell that she opened. And I knew the coffee shop that was there before in that space and it failed. And I was really worried for her. So I watched her. She opened the store. Um, she did great. I mean, Shanna is, she's just very, anyone that doesn't know Shanna, they quickly learn that she's a people person. She's very charming. She's um, easy, very likable. And that, that goes a long way in coffee as well. So she did really well. She opened her second store, you know, I was watching that. And then she became an AR. I can't remember if she became an R first or opened her second store first, but when she became an AR and she was like, you should open a coffee shop. And I was like, Shanna, I'm not, I'm not doing that. You know, I've got little kids, I'm nursing. I, you know, there's just, there's no way. Um, and then COVID hit and I was, again, I was really worried for my friend um, and so I was watching her and I was watching her out there, you know, hold signs up for other stores in the market. And it was a scary time. And, um, and I saw Big B do really well. And I saw how you guys responded to that. And I was impressed. And, um, I had been a stay at home mom for 10 years and I was wanting to be involved in society again, in a way that I hadn't been. And I was, I'm also a certified project manager. So I had gone um, back working for a nonprofit during, during COVID actually right before COVID um, back in the office. And I hated it. I just, I just, that's not my personality. Um, I miss the interaction with the community. I miss the challenge of, um, of, seeing something grow and in, in a way that's just really unique to, I'm an entrepreneur, you know, I had a podcast, you know, all the time I was a stay at home mom. I was also doing all these little things that I don't need to get into, but that's the really long backup to what made me decide to get into coffee. Um, I said to my husband, you know, 
Big B. I'm impressed, but now I know the brand. I've looked into who they are. Big. I've learned so much from Shanna, and um, I really wanted to be back in coffee, and I really wanted to be, um, and I, I wanted to be a business owner. So I called Shanna, um, and I had this. There was a site that was available. So Big B had a partnership with Meyer, where you could open a Big B, uh, a B cubed on Meyer property. I don't believe that that's happening anymore for future stores. I'm, I'm not sure, but I don't think that's the case. Um, they took a really long time to work with. So I would sign something, I'd send it to them and it would take them three, four months and then they would return it. And then I'd sign something and send it to them and it would take three, four five months. Um, and then I found out that we had um, the Department of Transportation had some huge road work plans happening that I, it, it took me getting that far down. You know, I tried to do my due diligence and, um, you know, see what was coming down the line, but this was buried deep, right? This huge project. Um, so then I had to decide, well, is it worth it or not? I started looking at some other sites and ultimately um, I just really wanted to stick with this site. So I just kind of held on to it because I, it seemed like it was worth it to me. And the road work happened or didn't happen? The road work started about 30 days ago. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in it right now. Hold on. How long is it going to take? A year. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it'll be better at the end of it. Oh, of course. Of course. Right. I mean, I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have held on if I didn't think it would be better. Yeah. Right. So we're right next to a, a pretty large, I don't know the difference between a highway, a freeway, you know, there's exits, um, but they closed off our exit. We're right off the exit. They closed the exit because they're building a bridge. Um, so I don't have any of that morning traffic getting off of the exit. It used to be that I was the first store that you would see. Now mm -hmm. you have to pass. And if you want to come to me, you've got to go to the second exit, turn around and get to me. So we're kind of tucked in the corner. But after the construction, not only will I have the exit again, but we'll have access to the entire community that was on the other side of the highway, which we got never it. had before. So it. It'll be worth it, but we're just going to have to kind of hold on for the next year. Yeah, it's going to be a long year then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was kind of looking at your numbers and I did have that question. What happened in the last month or so? You know? Yeah, that's yeah. what happened. I mean, so the there, there were a couple of phases. So they, they closed down one part on November 27th and then they kind of started closing more and more. But it was really when they really closed stuff off, it was this month, this past month. And we felt we feel we're feeling it. Yeah, Yeah, you can see it's pretty clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um. So in, in terms of your past experience in the coffee business, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't know that we have too many franchise owners with that coming into our world with that. Sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So tell, I know why I love the coffee business mm -hmm. and why I'm doing it 28 years later. <laughs> yeah. But, but why, what, what is it about the coffee business that, that you love so much? There's, there's so many things. Um, the one I mentioned already, it's, it's that daily interaction with the customer. So when you're in the store, there aren't many businesses that your customer comes to you every single day, you right. know, and you get this relationship with them that you, you don't get elsewhere. Um, so there's that piece. Um, I, I love the people that coffee generally attracts as far as being an employer you know, you get, you get a lot of high school kids, college guys and girls, you get um, people that are doing other things, but they just want to work in coffee. They think it would be fun. You get moms whose kids are in school and they want to have something during the day. You know, you get retirees that are just looking for a way to interact with the community. It's so cool. Um, and I'm so passionate about helping people develop in whatever way that they are, you know, meeting them there. And that's the most fulfilling part to me is the people, but you can get that kind of anywhere, but there's something special about the people that come to coffee and then the coffee, just the whole coffee industry. It's like, it's, it can be harsh, but it's also like romantic, you know? So, and I like both of those, both sides of the coin. I love like doing coffee tastings in the morning with the staff and teaching them about like the different blends, you know, we just did a coffee tasting this morning, living hope and big B best and French roast. And what is, you know, what are the difference in those tastes and what do they pair with? And why do customers, you know, cause a lot of people, even that come to work for us, 
they like coffee, but they like, you know, a vanilla latte. Right. But you say, well, let's do this black drip coffee tasting. Like, Oh, I don't want to do that. You know? And then turning them into that person. It's like, Oh, you know, Oh, I love living hope. That's my favorite coffee. Or, you know, I, they, it's, I love that so much. That's romantic. But then on the, on the other side, I love educating people about the hardships that your coffee farmer is going through and how you really do have a choice when you are purchasing a pound of coffee or even just purchasing your vanilla latte, what's happening behind that. You know, people don't know that coffee is usually a publicly traded commodity and that you've got brokers that are in between that and they don't understand the pricing and how that fluctuates. And, um, and so I, I'm, I love big before that, you know, the work that, Bob and Michelle are doing it's it's inspiring at um at, but it's it's good for it's just the right thing to do you know and and that's why I love coffee you know and when I was a project manager I worked for a nonprofit that um was under Luxottica and so they were going out and they were um helping people get eyesight you know have access to to um v- vision care and I mean, it's kind of the same thing, you know, I'm just someone that's attracted to, to people that are doing good things, but I'm also attracted to, um, I'm, I'm attracted to things that are exciting and where there's challenges because that feeling of having a challenge, I mean, frankly, even this like road construction that's happening, like, yeah, it's a bummer and it kind of hits the ego when you, you know, see how well you're doing in the system and then boom, you just go, oh, it's not fun. That part's not fun, but, oh, I'm excited for the day that that bridge opens. Right. right. And then <laughs> to see them all start coming in again, like that's why I'm, I'm holding out for that. Yeah. Um, so you, you'll never hear me say a bad word about Starbucks. Same. Yeah. So I love that company, what they've been able to do in many ways, they created our industry, you know, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Tell me what the magic of that place is. Yeah. It's the culture. It's the culture. Hands down. Um, Talk to me about that, about the culture. So I started with them and I think it was 98. I actually started, I started with them in the airport. Okay. I didn't even know what Starbucks was. I actually applied to work at Cheers in the Cincinnati airport, like Cheers, the TV show. There was a bar. I wasn't old enough to work at the bar. And so host Marriott services ran Cheers and they ran the Starbucks and they said you could work at Starbucks. And I was like, huh, what's that? Um, So I started, I started in, I think 98, 99. Um, and back then, I think they had maybe 1,500 stores. You know, I think they've got 30,000 stores now. When I left, it was like 15,000. Howard Schultz, um, he was the CEO. Um, we were still small enough that you were hearing from Howard every single day. Um, it was his leadership. He really, truly believes that if you take care of your people, your people will take care of your customer. Um and he lived and breathed that, you know, that, that was the culture that was created within the stores. Um, and so the other thing I think that makes them successful is that, and they're connected, but they really invested in the development of their people, both personally, but also professionally. Okay. So I started young, a part of my story that we don't have to to go down this path, but I had my first child when I was um, 18 years old and I was pregnant when I, at, I was working at Starbucks as a barista when I found out that I was pregnant and that's a pretty, oh shit moment. You know, what are you doing? And really the only path that made sense for me, because I had to, um, I had to take care of myself. I had to take care of my baby and I needed health insurance. Right. And Um, Starbucks had health insurance for 20 hours a week. So I had great health insurance and there was a path, a professional path for me. So I could go from barista to shift to assistant manager, to store manager. And I could, I saw that there was a way for me to provide for my child and Starbucks supported that. They put me through a ton of management training, um, And because I was so young and so inexperienced and frankly, so scared, 
I put everything I could into learning their system. If there was a memo that came down, I read that memo. If there was a book, I read that book. If there was, you know, the operations manual, I'm not saying I sat and read it from front to back one night, but I read that operations manual. And so I think that Starbucks, their secret to their success was their culture, but you're, you're creating a culture where people feel cared about. They have the resources um, to learn. You know, I learned how to read a PL when I was 18 years old. I know what flow through is. I, I knew that, you know, and um, you have to have, and now with their, they're all corporately owned, right? And so they, you have to have managers that know how to read a PL and know how to make changes, right? And I think, frankly, I think there's some, some, I'm not saying in this system necessarily, but there's franchisees that own their businesses. They don't even know what their, what their PL is telling them. They look at it, they see the bottom line, they either like it or they don't, and they, they don't know what to do to change those numbers. So I'm kind of going around and around, but your original question, um, what's their secret sauce? It's the culture around take care of the partner and the partner will take care of the customer. Um, but they really, they were able to live that. Now I have to also say, I haven't worked for them for 15 years. Um, they've had a ton of growth. I have no idea what they're doing now, but that's, that's what took them from, you know, 1500 stores to, you know, whatever it was, 18,000 when I left. Yeah. Well, it's very, it's very similar and aligned with our, our, our thinking around people, um, and you know, sometimes I I wish that I had more ability to interact with people, you know, mm-hmm. uh, with with mm-hmm. with baristas and so on. Uh, it's just a it's a little trickier when they're not your employees, you know. Uh, it is, but I also I think that whatever systems are in place, whether that's the AR community, you know, whatever those interactions are, um, that those owners are having, it's it's a different kind of fire. I think that has to be lit with the owner that are managing their, their own businesses. And so that culture has to be in in every single touch point, you know, there has to be, someone has to be so bought in to that culture that they're not even going to sign with big B until they are bought into that. Yeah. In fact, they, they need to be, if that's not who they are, they should be repulsed. (laughs) You know, they should be self-selecting to not, to not jump in. Well, and that was the intention of writing the books. Yeah. Is to put that content in the world. And, and if you, if you, I hope anyway, that if you read the books, it gives you enough to know how we approach the business so that you would self-select out or self-select in based on that. Yeah. Um, Okay. So uh, looking at, at, at the last year, so the you know the six months leading up to opening, and then what have been the surprises? Um, well, I guess we can go further back than that too. It could be the, in the development process, but yeah, what what have, what have yeah. been the surprises for you? So what I hear a lot of owners say that they were surprised they they didn't realize how much work it was going to take to open the store, right? I knew that I I knew that I'd be working open to close, you know, for a while. I knew that it's exhausting. Um, I think I was surprised. I think I, I took for granted. um, I took for granted what the customer, how the customer had evolved in the last 10 years. Um, I'm pausing because I want to, I'm not sure the customer is as gracious as they were 10 years ago. Um, I don't know if that's, you know, our social media now. I don't know if it's because you can leave a Google review just when you're mad. Um, but I was really shocked when we opened, like, wow, some of these people are really upset in a way that I hadn't experienced before. So that was a surprise. Um, I was surprised at how little had changed in the, um, who you hire. I heard so many people, Oh, Michelle, just wait until you hire, you know, it's just not the same. These people, they just don't want to work. 
that's not my experience. Um, I had, I had 186 applications when we opened, I had to have a spreadsheet. I couldn't keep track of them. So, um, that was a pleasant surprise. Um, I was surprised at how expensive it was, you know, the, um, I, I spent way more than I thought I was going to spend to open this store. Yeah. We talked about that at one point when we were together, I think it was like the hockey game or something. Yeah. Yeah. I was a little surprised too, frankly. Yeah. Um, but that's, I mean, those are numbers that are coming out now. So yeah. um, that seems to be more of the norm. What I was your, say. what, what was, what did the site work cost you? Um, the site. So I'm all in at like 600. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, the site work was, well, whatever, a you lot. know, 250. It was a lot. Yeah. yeah. It was a lot. Yeah. That, that's, uh, that, that animal, that site development animal is, uh, boy, it's, it is all over the place too, you know? Yeah. Um, and you hit but, a point where you're kind of, you're so far in that yeah. you, you're like, well, do we lose what we've already dropped in or do we keep going with it? You know, know. And it's a hard call. I know it, we're putting a lot of effort and energy into understanding that better. Um, you know, when we, when we got started with the BQ projects, you know, we, we, we thought the, you know, we thought we understood it. We thought we understood the the sort of band of variants, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But it, the band of variants is way bigger than we thought. It's yeah. way bigger. And it, it just, frankly, it, it changes the model, you know, it right. changes the investment model because um, it changes the amount of, for some people, the, the amount of cash, um, uh, equity that you have to put in. Right. So then you think you're tapping certain areas and then you've got to tap other areas. And so, uh, that's something to really to consider. Um, and it changes how much coffee you got to sell. Yeah. You know, to get your return. Yeah. 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 That's a, that's a, that's a, a, a very, very big deal in our world right mm -hmm. now. Uh, yeah. and, and, uh, we're, we're in that <clears throat> as best we can be, you yeah. know, um, Okay, so what do you think makes a successful owner? What what if you you I mean you've got an understanding of how the, all this works, and if if you were I you know it, it's so nice to hear you talk about your empathy for Shannon when she opened, you know, like because I feel that way too when I um when people I know or starting businesses and so on. But like, if you had to tell Shanna back in the day what she needed to focus on, uh, or, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be somebody opening a coffee shop, just in a business in general. Like, what do you, what, what, what do you say? Um, I think, well, it's, I mean, it's people, that's such a generic answer, right? But you, you, I've worked for people that don't have that that feeling that that's what it takes. I've worked for people that believe success is about numbers and just getting the sale and getting the number. Um, and it may work for them, you know, I'm, certainly people make money that way. Um, but you have to care about the people that you're working with and working for. You have to care about, I mean, genuinely care. I, I think most people think they care, <laughs> but I mean, genuinely care for right. people, um, caring for your staff, but caring for your customers, but teaching your staff how to care, care about the peers, you know, the, the saying, um, lead by example. I hate, I hate that phrase with a passion because I think it's a cop out, you know, it's like, oh, I'm just going to come in here and do it. And then everyone else will be able to do it. No, you have to teach people how to do it, right. you know? Um, and I think that that is what makes a leader. So maybe that's my answer. I think you have to have the desire to be a leader. And without that, you're either going to burn out, your people are going to burn out, your customers aren't going to get the experience that they need for you to have sustainability. Um and I see a lot of people that they get into it because they want, and I'm not saying about Big B specifically, I'm just saying people start their business or um, because they, they want the money. Yeah, sure. We all, we all want to do well financially, um, but there's gotta be more than that. Like if you want the money, 
go, frankly, go get a job. It's, it's safer and no one's going to call you at five in the morning, right? Like Mm -hmm. go, go get a nine to five job. Um, But if you really want something that has exponential growth, but you want to really make a difference in people's lives, you have to be, you have to want to be a leader. So you hate the phrase lead by example. Lead by example. Yeah. I hate the phrase. It's so hard to find good people. And my take on that is it's not about finding good people. It's about creating an environment that allows people to thrive. I a hundred percent agree. How do you do that? I know you agree. (laughs) (laughs) But how, <laughs> and I love that. But uh, but how do you do that? How do you create an environment for people to thrive? Well, I mean, it starts with where are you finding your people? How are you finding your people? Right. So in this specific instance of a coffee shop, I'm finding people by being actively engaged in the community. So going to every single chamber chamber of commerce meeting, letting people know, hey, I'm hiring. You got any kids that are you know, and making letting the community know who I am so that those people, those executives at the hospital down the street, they want their kids to work for me, right? Because they want to make sure that their kids are in good hands. Um, It's going to the high school, having good relationship with the, everyone at the high school, you know, going and talking about business at the high school so that those, those students see like, Oh, I want to be around her. I want to be a part of her organization. And, you know, even the people that come in off the street, my, one of my favorite things is sitting down um, at an orientation after I've interviewed someone and I said, okay, here's what you just signed up for. Here's how we do this. And we do this and we do this. And their eyes are just like, I thought I was getting a job. Like they're so excited because we're talking about development, you know, here. And I start that for the 16 year old too. Here's your job description. You've never seen a job description. Okay. This is what a barista job description is. Here is the first staff review we're going to do. You know, let's look at that now. So that way, when you start, you know, this is how I'm watching. This is how you can be successful. They know to even expect a review. And I get really, and like that, like this stuff that we're talking about, like, that's why I wanted to get back into working. You know, frankly, my husband, he's provided really well for us. I had a pretty cush life the last 10 years staying at home. Um, I didn't have to go back to work. I wanted to go back to work because I want to be contributing to society again. I want to be having conversations with, you know, not my whole staff. They're not all 18 and 19 year olds. Um, but in this, you know, specific example, I want that 16 year old to expect to have a job description, to expect to have performance review, to expect to be treated with respect and dignity. I want that for them. Um, And right now I'm really passionate about the people that are kind of stuck between high school and college. You know, maybe they didn't really apply themselves in high school or they didn't have the resources and they don't think they're going to college. What do you do? How do you get them to get from, you know, making 10 bucks an hour to being able to have a car and live on their own, have an apartment one day. And it's I have um, health insurance, all of that, you know, and how, how are they going to get there? They've got to have skills. And they have to be able to have these conversations. So if I can take someone through coffee and teach them about customer service, you know, everything that you, you know, that poster that was so popular back in the day, like everything I needed to know about life, I learned from kindergarten or learned from my, I feel the same way. Like everything that you need to know about working in the corporate world, you can learn from your job as a barista, a hundred percent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, switching gears a little bit, uh, getting maybe a little more pragmatic. Uh, had you ever been in a, in a drive-through only environment before? Not drive-through only. I had been in many drive-throughs, though. What do you think? What's what's been your impression and uh, experience running the BQ? The drive-through only. Drive-through only. Yeah. Um, it's easier. It's, it's certainly easier to run. Um, I, I find it to be, you know, I've only been open, you know, seven months. It seems to be more profitable. Um, there's just less that you have to deal with, you know, fewer staff, um, you know, fewer tables to clean. 
um, there is a, there is a, there is a bit of a loss in that community staple, you know, you certainly build the relationships through the drive through that part is there. Um, but there is a loss that you don't have, you know, the, whoever the group that comes in every Saturday morning and has like their, their meeting or their knitting group, you know, there's that. Yeah. It's different. Um, but there's a place for it too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, I actually have never operated one. Right. So I've never operated a drive through only. Uh, yeah, and I was, yeah. an, you know, the, the, the going but way back, I was anti drive through only for so long because yeah. I, I really, I really thought that that, that that piece of community engagement would be gone, you know, or mm-hmm. you'd lose that. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, it's really proven out to be pretty amazing. Uh, and, yeah. <laughs> and as we go, we all learn the stuff that we, uh, Sure. I I was, you know, I think I also try to think about like, what's the stuff that I'm hung up on right now? That's as wrong as that call was, you know, know, but you just never know until uh, you're on the other side of it. It's impossible (laughs) to know. I know. Uh, Well, yeah. So go ahead. What what were you going to say? No, I was just going to reiterate that. Yeah. Uh, What is, what is something interesting about your background that, that we don't know about? Oh gosh. Um, I mean, in in what area? I don't know anything like, (laughs) um, I mean, I think you, you, so you know that I had my child young. That's a big part of my identity. You know, that I've been caught in coffee. Um, I, uh, I take weekly Spanish lessons. So I'm, I, some would call me fluent. I do not call myself fluent. Um, I can have a conversation, but if we go down certain topics, I can't talk. And then I play classical guitar. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I, uh, I just like, but again, like, I just like being involved. So like, I love playing music because it connects you with other people. I love learning, like learning another language because there's just cultures of people that then you can have conversations with. And, um, so it's one of my, it's one of my primary regrets is that I'm, oh, mono, yeah? I'm monolingual. It's not too late. I know. There's only so much time. It's true. But you'd be surprised at what an hour a week can get you. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Full immersion. Just find a tutor. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That is cool. Um, if you had one piece of advice to me leading this company, what would Mm -hmm. that be? Be more aggressive about demanding that culture that you're looking for in every area of business. Mm -hmm. How? Um, 360 feedback reviews, talking to more people about their specific experience. Um, You're in a unique position because you're leading an organization that's also your customer. You know, I know you have Global, which is your organization, but even this conversation, you know, technically I'm your customer, but it also feels like I'm sitting down with the CEO of my company that I work for, right? Right. So it's very different. So there's different things that need to be served there. Um, I think that the, it can be a runaway train when the culture starts to go down a path that isn't what the intended culture is. And it's hard to get that back. Um, And so I think that's more, it doesn't have to be you, but I think that, if it is you dropping in and really getting a finger on the pulse of not just the people that are maybe disenfranchised, um, but where does that come from? But, but also what are those people doing to the culture? You know, um, there's a lot of, I think there can be squeaky wheel gets the grease. There's always going to be, and it's the same, you know, even in my, um, door, you know, you've got people that are frustrated and they, you know, always are voicing their frustrations, but what does that do to the rest of the group? How is that derailing the culture? 
Um, and how do you fix that? How do you, and, and it's, it's hard. I think it's hard to get back. It's, it's a big shift to turn around once it starts going south. So how do you, how do you deal with that? Yeah, I don't know. I've never, I've never. <laughs> That's my job to figure <laughs> I've, out, right? I've, I've operated coffee shops. I've never, uh, I've never, yeah, I've never done what you've done. Well, um, yeah, I, I. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I think like what we're trying to do is um, fully engage our own culture. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, we, we have uh, people that, that are not aligned with our culture. It becomes clearer and clearer that mm -hmm. we're not aligned. Mm -hmm. And, and then, and then we can sort of pragmatically work our way through that. Yeah. Uh, whether it's, you know, I've had conversations with franchise owners that, you know, we, we agree to disagree. We agree. We love each other, but there's just some things that we're not going to agree on. Those sure. are the more, those are the simpler ones, you know, cause it's yeah. like pretty out in the open and clear what we're talking about. And it's pretty easy. Um, but then there's the insidious stuff that you, that you don't, you can't have that open conversation about, or you don't even know what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. We spent, I mean, I spent a lot of my, my time in, in, you know, in the EOS environment, uh, mm -hmm. which is, yeah. Oh yeah. You, you know, we're, my Bob and I are in charge of, of, uh, well, one is relationships, what mm -hmm. they call uh, strategic relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, two, we're in charge of, it's not strategic partnerships. It's, it's oh gosh. Um, uh oh. <laughs> primary, like the primary part yeah. relationships, right? Like, yeah. so make, maintaining those and keeping those and then strategic thinking. That's how I went sideways. Mm -hmm. So then we're, we're looking at the business five and 10 years out. But then the other thing is, is the culture. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that's the other, that's the other thing that we're supposed to foster and, and develop and, and continue is the, is because the, culture. the, the culture dictates whether those other things will be executed in the way that you're hoping they're executed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we're in it, you know, we're, we're doing it. We're, we're trying. Absolutely. It's... No, <laughs> absolutely. I, and, and, the conversation, it's not a critique. It's, I uh, it's, you know, well, I asked by the way, Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean, and, and I agree with you. I mean, I'm, I'm just sitting here agreeing with you. Uh, if, if you, if you were sitting with a, a new franchisee signed a lease they're mm -hmm. at that moment that you had mentioned, they can't mm -hmm. go back. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and we all, there's that moment in every business. I mean, you can, mm -hmm. it just, it's, it's a loss. Very, yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. very painful moment. Painful, if you yeah. choose what, what is the, what's the nugget you land with? What's the, what are, you know, it's probably a lot of the same stuff we're talking about. Right. But um, just very, very simply a big B franchisee sitting there about to, you know, getting ready to open their store. What, what do you, what do you share with them? So I think there's a lot of level setting of expanding the time horizon that you expect the return. And I think a lot, I, I, if you are, if you're expecting to turn on, you know, turn on the lights, flip the open sign and start making money, I'm not sure that that's, if that's um, accurate. I hope that happens for you. It can happen for you. It might not. Right. And you gotta, you gotta understand, um, what do you do? Right. Because people get fear. There's a lot, of course there's fear around money, but you shrink in that fear. And so you start cutting labor, you start not ordering something that you might order. You start not giving the staff that, you know, little perk you might've given. And you're just shooting yourself in the foot, frankly. Um, because the second that you do get that pop, that rush of customers, you know, they're ready and you're not because you were skimping on labor. Um, and so you have to have, you have to give the customer the confidence that they're going to come back and have a great experience. So, I mean, the advice that, that for that franchisee that they just signed the lease and now they're kind of in the, Oh my gosh, what did we just do? Um, 
you do it, you do it with enthusiasm and you do it with the faith that you're in it and you're going to sink or swim. So just give it what, what you can and build the relationships, build the relationships with the other owners that are around you. You know, even if there are no stores around you, if you're in a new market, go build relationships with other people in other markets, build relationships with people at the home office, you know? we we're all learning. And like you kicked off the whole conversation. Um, we shouldn't have to repeat things that other people are doing. You know, that is, that's the beauty of the franchise model is I should be able to, I shouldn't have to create a new system. Someone else probably already created it better than I would. Let me go tap on that person's shoulder and say, Hey, let me get that thing that you're doing. Yeah. Um, but you know, the second that you let fear guide you, you're done. You know, you're just done. Yeah, that I mean, thank you for that. I I um that is that is one of the primary expectations. And one of the primary messages I always tried to send back when I was in, in development and, and working with prospective franchisees was it aligning expectation with reality and when expectation mm-hmm. gets too far beyond reality then there's disappointment and mm-hmm. fear and disappointment and disenfranchisement and yeah yeah that leads to that leads to really i mean difficult decision making you know mm-hmm. uh and you know we all know fear we we do mm-hmm. right but but you sure. can't let it you can't let it get in the way of what you need to do to make the business successful and and i i've seen so many times where i feel like the franchise owner gets it so close you know and you're like oh it's just you, you you're you're there right like you just gotta keep doing it you just gotta yeah. keep going and and yeah you know, I've seen moments in our history where where people have have given up and in, in, at the wrong time and it's like, oh. and so maybe those are the people that you talk to for this as well and you know who are those owners that stuck in it and hear those those oh, stories of, yeah, you there's know, plenty of those. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And, and no. because, and so going back to my corporate coffee experience, you know, opening all of these stores, you know, that would, that's um, a unique position to be in, to be able to open stores, see the sales go up and down and this and that. And like, I'm not worried about it. I'm right. check, you know, it doesn't matter to me. I was invested because I wanted the bonus at the end of the quarter. You know, yeah. I wanted to grow the sales. Um, but it gave me a freedom to be able to take risk, to be able to do, you know, I, I can even feel it. I can feel the tension right now being my own business owner, like having my money on the line, things that I did over and over and over. And I'm like, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I need to do this. Yes, of course I need to do this, but I feel the tension sure. when it's your money, man, it feels different. Whole yeah. different ball game. Whole yeah. different ball and yeah. I think, I think some of that helps Starbucks too, though. Right. Like, you know, when you've got that kind of a balance sheet backing you up, it's, you know, uh, Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you're not, you're not sweating, you're not sweating 300 bucks here and 500 bucks there. That's know? right. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, well, you know, Hey, I'm, I mean, I appreciate this so much and there's, yeah. there's just so much value, I think. And yeah, you know, wh- whether you sell or don't sell, I don't see that as. I, I hope I, I hope that's not the end of a relationship, you know. And no, we're and always going to be here. And and yeah, and, absolutely. I mean, I think I think that I'll I'll stay. Um, I I feel like that's the way that this is going to go. It just was kind of one of those things. Like, well, this might work out, and it it would be. I could see where it'd be really good for this other owner too. Um. So, yeah, I mean, if I leave, it's not, it's not for any other reason, just that things changed for our family in the last sure. three years. But if sure. I stay, I'm also here a hundred percent bought in and happy to yeah, be that's here. Cool. So, yeah, that's cool. I know we, we, uh, we, we aren't selling, we won't sell. And it's mainly for the simple, it's a very similar reason to your answer is for my family. I don't, like, I don't know what I do, <laughs> Yeah, you know? And, and, and so like, like I stay in it cause it's what I enjoy doing and it fulfills yeah. my, you know, my professional life and, uh, and so on. Right. But, um, you know, yeah. anyway, and I thanks. Think that's it. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah, me too. Awesome. And, and I know that there's, uh, there's already nuggets. I'm going to pull out your, 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 your uh, comments around leadership, uh, and, and comments around people, this, the, the statement of, um, uh, 
it was about oh no it was it was do as um not not do as i say lead by example that was oh it. yeah i'm gonna yeah. pull that that's gonna get pulled out because i love that right you you can't just go in and do it and have people watch you it takes so much more than that right yeah uh, and i and i loved your your comments about the business and what fear does to us you know and yeah. i mean that stuff there's there's a lot of great nuggets in this and and uh you know, I, I hope people, I really hope people use these, you know, because I, I think there's just, a, there's a ton there uh, for, for somebody coming into our system or even. Let me ask you um, while I have you, because when you are on your own and you don't have a boss that you report to, you don't really, it's hard to get some feedback. I'm curious what, what even made you think to send me an invite to this? Because I've only been open for six months and you've got a lot of people. I know you'll invite other people, but sure. I, I, you know, I want, I want a diverse group. Mm -hmm. So I want, I want the Tim Hoffman's and the Matt Lammers and the Shannas, but I also want people that are just open. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I knew your experience in coffee, so I thought it would be an interesting conversation too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, but I, I also want to have the conversation with somebody that's been open for six months to a year that didn't know a thing about the business mm -hmm. or coffee coming in, you know, mm -hmm. but it's yeah. really about, trying to build a portfolio of conversations that have a bunch of different vantage points, a bunch of different yeah. perspectives. Uh, and that's, that's awesome. you know, and so the new, the new, the new owner, what do they call that? There's a term for that. If my brain worked better, I would, these conversations would be so much more interesting. <laughs> the what's that, what do they call that when you are new, the, the genius of new or. Oh, um, or, you know, like, yeah. The person that's been yeah. around for six months could be and and brings a perspective that you could be the smartest person in the room, right? And brings right. a perspective that nobody else has, and that's like super important, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, they ask the questions that other people are afraid to ask, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. and they see things differently. They're not entrenched in the history and mm -hmm. and and so on. So you know that's that's why. Um, and uh, cool. and and you know I've always I had a great time with you and in in. in James in the uh, hockey game. We hung out and talked for yeah. so long. And, and so I knew it would be a good, I knew it'd be a good talk. Cool. All right. Well, thanks so much, Mike. Always great to talk with you. You too, Michelle. Have a great day. Right. You too. Bye. Bye.